Hey everybody, my name is Colin Slaap and I'm a watchmaker here in the Netherlands. And this is part three, I think, of cleaning watch parts. And I would like to show you the automatic way of cleaning watch parts. You can call it the professional way, but uh, using cleaning machines. Uh, we are lucky enough to have two of them here in the workshop. On the left you see the Elma. Uh, RM90, if I'm not mistaken, and on the right we have the Greiner ASC900, lovely machine. Uh, and I would like to talk to you uh, about using the machines, um, all the accessories uh, attached to it, and um, I really hope uh, it's helpful uh, for you as watchmakers. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, we do love reading the comments and uh, I'll make sure I'll answer every single one of them. So, cheers everybody. Well, in the previous parts we were discussing the liquids. Uh, for the machines we use uh, different liquids. Um, the benzene and the isopropyl uh, uh, are not that's well um, uh, for, the, for the cleaning machines. So I'll tell you a bit more about the stuff we use. And as I always say, um, I would like to give you the best, best practice, the way we are doing the things here. And I talk a lot with uh, watchmakers all over the world. Um, it is a suggestion. Uh, and if you have perfect results, uh, with your own system, well, who am I to tell you to do otherwise? So, um, but yeah, just if you uh, are starting as a watchmaker or you want to learn a bit more, well, I'm just telling you the way we are doing things. And um, this stream is in no way uh, sponsored. So um, it's uh, just our experience and which I like to share. Um, if you're into it, um, uh, you're watching the, the uh, YouTube channel Chronoglide and uh, I love to share watchmaking knowledge um, with you. So if you're interested, please subscribe to uh, Chronoglide and uh, if you have any suggestions or future topics, please let me know through the comments. Uh, the cleaning machines, um, both of them uh, we have here. And um, the older machine, the light blue, we use as a pre-rinse machine because we do a lot of vintage watches here. And uh, sometimes they're just full of oil. It's horrible. Um, so if it's way too, uh, too dirty, well, first the pre-rinse. Um, I talk a lot with uh, other watchmakers. Some of them prefer a pre-rinse before disassembly. Uh, I don't. I would like to see everything that's going on, the scrapings, the filings, everything that goes on inside the watch movement. So I always do uh, the um, disassembly uh, before any rinsing, so I know exactly what is going on in, uh, in the movement. And if there are tiny parts, teeth broken or uh, sitting leaf or spring broken, I like to find them in the movement and I don't want them uh, rinsed away. Um, it's all basically the same, but it's just a different order of working. That's it. Uh, but again, just about the same. Well, we have all watch parts here. And in an earlier video, I showed you the manual way of cleaning with the uh, benzene jar and with the small brush of uh, sable hair. Uh, that's a manual way of cleaning. And that doesn't say anything about the results. You can get it perfectly clean, but it's so labor intensive and time consuming. And that is why uh, professional watchmakers use uh, machines like these. Mm. And watchmaker fuel. 
Machines like these, uh, I'll show you in a moment, I'll go, uh, go there. Uh, these machines have four pots. Usually, I know some other, some uh, watchmakers uh, use it differently. Uh, when there are three pots in your cleaning machine, usually it's one cleaning agent and two rinsing agents. So there are two liquids in a machine. Um, with four pots, we use, I, we use <laughs> uh, two cleaning agents, two rinsing agents, but I know uh, some watchmakers use one cleaning agent and three rinsing agents. Oh well, whatever gives you the best result. Um, I prefer the two cleaning, two rinsing. For the liquids um, we've used for a uh, so for the liquids we used for a very long time the Greiner. This is the rinsing agent, Spulum, uh, German. Great results. And now for some time we are using the LNR. Again, uh, this stream is not sponsored in any way. Um, I'm just showing you alternatives of what to use. Um, LNR, and to be honest, they are very close in the end result. Uh, nice, clean watch parts. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Um, so, in the machines, we use two liquids. One is the cleaning agent and one is the rinsing agent. And the rinsing agent uh, evaporates more e easily and doesn't leave a residue. Uh, maybe a good tip if you are using cleaning agents and rinsing agents. And it's the same if you use four pots or three pots. Uh, the two pots of rinsing agents, if you uh, change your liquids, you can switch them around so the last pot, which is usually not that contaminated with uh, lubricants, oil and uh, stuff dissolved in it, you can use it as the first rinsing pot. Uh, saves you a bit of money, but nothing wrong with uh, uh, changing all the pots at the same time. Um, the cleaning agents will dissolve uh, the lubrication, which is the oil and the grease in watch movements. Um, and in one pot, one jar with cleaning agents, uh, there is so much oil you can dissolve in that particular pot. So once every 10, 15, maybe 20 movements, you have to clean uh, uh, the pots, clean them out and um, uh, have new uh, liquid in it. It's not to say every 10, every 20, maybe every 30, um, it depends how much oil there is and how much contamination in each movement. So I cannot tell you uh, it's 10 movements, if it's 50 movements, um, it's somewhere in between. Uh, have a close look at your cleaning agents and have a close look at the watch parts when they come out of the machine, uh, what they look like. Well, these are two pots with the rinsing agent. Rinsing is usually uh, clear and the, uh, the uh, cleaning agent is usually a bit brownish. Um, you see glass pots, uh, glass jars, so uh, the, uh, the liquids won't dissolve uh, any plastics. So usually uh, the pots are made of glass. But you see here some metal in there, 
and same here. If you have a round jar or a square jar, there's always something in there um, that makes uh, the liquid whirl because usually it's a back and forth motion or a revolving motion. Well, here are two cleaning machines. One older version, three pots uh, for us pre-rinse. Here the newer version, the Griner ACS uh, 900, lovely machine. Four pots. Um, here we have two cleaning agents and two rinsing agents. And why the automatic um, washing machines is that they revolve automatically. Um, if you got one that you have to manually put the, the uh, baskets in the next pot, no problem whatsoever. A bit more labor intensive, but then again, a whole lot cheaper. Uh, there we go. Put all the parts in the machine, secure, and then the cleaning program. And simply start uh, cleaning the parts. And why I love this grinder, it is so versatile because it's uh, you can choose your own program and create your own program. Um, it is five positions, so four pots and position five is blowing the hot air. Uh, S is spinning. So which program? Um, the first number is the amount of minutes inside the pot. So nine minutes in pot one, nine minutes pot two, and the rest. And the second number is the motion. So number three is medium, number one is really slow, and number five is a real quick motion in cleaning. So you can program this machine yourself. Uh, for us, program two is three minutes in each pot, and motion number five is real quick. Um, this number three is one minute in each spot, so a quick rinse. And uh, motion number three, a bit, bit medium. Uh, I've programmed uh, this number four as only pot number two, one minute for five, uh, uh, with a quick uh, action number five. And uh, so the pot number two is the cleaning agent. Pot number four is the uh, rinsing agent. And again, just a one minute. So uh, this program we use as a final rinse if we made adjustments to a part um, and just have to perfectly clean it before it goes into the, uh, the movement. Just one minute uh, uh, cleaning, one minute rinsing and then um, uh, nine minutes uh, to dry and then it's uh, uh, ready to go into the watch movement and uh, uh, just the final quick rinse. Lovely machine. Here are watch parts which need to be cleaned. And usually in a cleaning machine we have baskets like these. They all come in different sorts and sizes. And we are lucky enough to have a lot of these small baskets. Um, I like to keep the delicate parts separated from the rest because it is a revolving motion. Uh, you don't want all the watch parts banging uh, against each other in the cleaning machine. So um, the smaller baskets are for, uh, well, we use them. And if you use them in a, in a different kind of way, no problem whatsoever. For the escape wheel, for uh, the shock system, the chaton and the capstones, and the uh, pedal fork. So once it comes out of the cleaning machine, it can go straight into the uh, epilam. And the epilam is like this. If you're into that, we've got uh, uh, a video on lubrication and um, epilam, fixo drop. Uh, on our YouTube channel, Chrono Light, uh, you can find it under lubrication. Because all the small parts 
come out of the cleaning machine, you can leave them in this basket and the small basket can go straight into the epilam without touching it, without uh, having to take it out. So everything stays pristine clean, goes into the epilam and after that it goes uh, into the normal uh, uh, thing we keep the watch parts in. So that's a smaller one, larger one. Again, you don't want the fragile stuff next to the heavy uh, bridges and cocks and the heavy parts. So I always do, again, best practice, maybe you work in a completely different way. Um, the gears, I keep them always in one uh, container. Um, all the heavy parts can go into one container and makes life so much easier. And if you have tiny springs like these, for example, that tiny spring there, um, you want it clean, but it can go through this bit here. Now we have, these are the crystals of uh, tiny um, uh, pocket watches and they are slightly curved. So if we place the tiniest part like that and again uh, the cleaning action of the machines go back and forth, back and forth, uh, so it always slides. If we put one piece of glass over it, it will get clean but it cannot go up and inside uh, the maze there. So um, I think it's a good tip uh, not to uh, damage or lose any parts in, uh, in a cleaning machine. Well, that is for me uh, about cleaning watch parts. I know there's so much more information to give, but I wanted to uh, keep it basic so um, you can pick out uh, stuff that is uh, of use for you. So there is the liquids, benzene, naphtha, lighter fluid, uh, purified petrol, which is one cleaning agent, and that's usually for manual cleaning or just a final rinse. There is IPA, isopropyl alcohol, 99.9% .9 pure, uh, which is excellent for a final rinse. It evaporates very quickly. It doesn't leave a residue. It's very important in watchmaking. For the cleaning of the parts themselves, we got pack wood, so versatile, you use it every single day. We got pith wood, um, lovely to have. Uh, for me, really uh, basic stuff to have in your uh, workshop. Um, even if it's a tiny workshop and you're just starting with uh, watchmaking as a hobby, pack wood and pith wood, I fully recommend. Um, I sharpen it with a scalpel, but if you just got a sharp knife, or a Stanley knife, problem, no problem whatsoever. We have the cleaning machines. We uh, are lucky enough to have two, um, one pre-rinse and one cleaning machine. But then again, if you just have the one, uh, no problem whatsoever. Uh, we use LNR cleaning and rinsing agents and um, Greiner. Uh, Again, not sponsored, use what you like, and, but we do uh, get uh, good results from them. And um, that's it for me. Um, thank you so much for uh, watching this YouTube channel. Um, if you like it, please subscribe and uh, leave comments. Uh, we love to hear your views, your experience, and um, I'll try to answer any comment uh, personally. So please leave your thoughts and uh, thank you for watching. See ya. Good night.